Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode, we are going to have a look at the radiator expansion tank setup. All right, those of you watching last week will have seen that I uh, started playing around putting the throttle bodies on the engine and uh, and sort of working out where the air filters and stuff were going to be. Um, as you can see here, I have done a little bit of work on the uh, on, in the previous week, just uh, playing around and swapped them out with, uh, I've got some uh, a hard aluminum tube, that other stuff was just temporary anyway, um, with some silicon bands in here. There were some suggestions to potentially move the throttle body so that they're down, uh, down here, so past the bend. I... I'll look into that. The issue is, is that you can't really use this silicon as the bend, uh, the other side of the throttle body the main issue being that where if the throttle body was here on this side of the silicon when you um, back off the throttle and it's under vacuum it can suck the silicon silicon closed it's just it's too soft you uh, you really need to have a uh, um, a more rigid bend there and it's difficult to get the bend onto um, the end of this plenum the uh, by the time I messed around and did it with a hard tube and silicon bends, I'm not going to save much space anyway. So um, the only reason I would th consider doing it is to sort of keep this, uh, keep the front of the engine here shorter. But uh, I don't think it's going to work. So I'll play with that for now and uh, and see what we need to do is about uh, getting to fit anyway. Obviously, when I start building the bonnet bulge, um, and I cut the bonnet out further to sort of uh, to accommodate what we've got. Then we can work out whether the bulge is going to be too big. I think it's still going to be uh, pretty good, and I think it should be able to be accommodated pretty well. That said, uh, another just a couple of questions about the uh, oil cooler. I keep getting lots of suggestions of why I don't put the oil cooler up the other way and have the hoses at the bottom. Uh, the big issue with putting the hoses at the bottom is that you run the uh, risk of having a big air bubble in the top of the oil cooler that never never goes away. There's no way to bleed it inside that oil cooler. So the oil will just sort of travel over the bottom part of the oil cooler, never using the top of the oil cooler. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not an effective way of... Uh, um, of setting it up so that's why the uh, hoses are definitely staying at the top there also isn't really uh, any more room at the bottom because of uh, because of the way it uh, the the front of the car slopes back uh, the oil cooler is as low down as it can go those uh, oil tubes would actually stick through the holes in the bottom so it's not really going to help um, so that's the way I've done it so let's move on to um, explaining a bit more about the radiator so I got this radiator made up um, very early on in the piece um, in, in uh, Mastello Parts in Italy. Actually, my, uh, custom made the radiator for me to uh, to my specs, and I didn't really understand how radiators in more modern cars worked. Uh, I thought I did, but I didn't really. I, I'm used to things like on the Datsun, which is pretty simple. You've got the uh, uh, a radiator cap, an inlet, and an outlet, and uh, and you're done. Modern cars don't exactly work like that, and uh, I was showing my ignorance, so I've done a bit of research, and I think now I'm wrapping my head around how this stuff actually works. So a lot of you guys, like myself, would have had uh, modern cars, and you open the engine bay, and you go, oh, I'm not putting the water into the radiator anymore, I'm putting it into this plastic expansion tank, uh, and uh, it's got a level on the side, and all this stuff, and you're sort of wondering how it works and what's actually happening and how the water level goes up and down and what's going on. And I thought I could explain it hopefully with a little bit more detail now. So this is the basic system of my car. So that's the uh, the radiator I have. I've put a cap on it just to help fill the system, but uh, that's not actually the pressure cap. You've got the, uh, the inlet on the top coming from hot water from the engine, cools through the radiator, comes out the bottom into the... Um, water pump, my electric water pump, and then it will be pumped from the electric water pump back into the engine and back into the system again. So that's the simple version of how a radiator works. But then you have the issue that when the radiator gets hot and produces steam, there's expansion. And uh, in the past, you'd have a, uh, a radiator cap sitting on the radiator. And basically, as the, uh, the water gets hot, the, uh, the presses up on the rubber, the steam would press up on the radiator cap and that would then leak out a hose on the side that just go onto the ground and all of that steam slash overflow water would just get dumped onto the ground and that was how they always worked. 
That is not the way it's uh, it's done these days. They want to obviously keep the everything inside the car. You don't want to just dump stuff on the ground. And um, that is where this modern system works. So in my case, I'm going to have um, an expansion tank, which is going to be the highest point of the system. That will be full of hot water. So I'm going to have a dash six line going from the top of the radiator tank going up into this expansion tank. So that will let any of the, uh, the steam vapor, whatever, off into this pressure tank. Um, and at the bottom, we'll have a dash 10 fitting going down to the bottom of the radiator. That will uh, return any of the hot water back into the radiator. So this will all sort of act like just the holding tank for more water of the, from the radiator system. This is where it starts getting a little bit more interesting is this is where the radiator cap is going to be on top of the expansion tank. And what's going to happen is when the uh, engine gets hot and it wants to um, expand and release that uh, pressure out of the system, it will push the cap up and out of the cap it will overflow and go into the bottom of my overflow tank. Now this overflow tank is vented to the atmosphere. So, um, it generally only have a tiny little bit of uh, water in the bottom of it. In my case, it's only have a little bit of um, water or coolant in the bottom of it. And as the engine gets hot, it'll overflow into that tank and, and sort of fill up a, a portion of that tank. Now, the interesting part is, is that as the engine cools down, <clears throat> this seal system is obviously all sealed by this radiator cap and there's no way for any air or anything to get in the system. So. When it cools down, obviously it's all going to contract, and if you've uh, seen on old cars, sometimes um, when they cool down, uh, a radiator hose might collapse. That is often a sign that you've got a dead radiator cap, because radiator caps don't actually have one opening on them. They actually work in two directions. So when the vacuum builds up inside uh, the system, it actually pulls the cap the other way, it opens up, and it will suck the uh, excess water that's gone up into this system back into the expansion tank again, keeping it all a sealed system. Nothing goes on the ground, and uh, that is actually how it works. So, um, took me a while to uh, work that out, but uh, that's a sort of very simplified version of what is actually happening. Uh, hopefully, that now makes a little bit more sense to some of you guys. So this is what I need to build. So what I'm going to be building, I originally uh, got this cool Raceworks expansion tank and realized to fit in my engine bay, it's not really going to fit. So I'm going to make my own expansion tank for the engine bay. As I said, I got this uh, really nice pre-made Raceworks expansion tank that I was going to mount right down in here. The trouble is, is that because of the angle of the side of the engine bay, it would have mean either I mount it on its side, which would look horrible, or um, actually uh, cut the back of it off and sort of, uh, and then modify it all. And by the time I modify it at all, I may as well make an entirely new tank because it's going to look neater than sort of butchering something like this that's already uh, pretty and pre-made. But one thing I am going to use, this is the overflow tank, uh, also from Raceworks. I'm going to use this one, so if I can get the top off. So basically what this has is it has two inlets in the bottom. So one of them is uh, is the this side is the inlet for the uh, from the expansion tank that I mentioned before. So any overflow will come up in here, and then as um, as the tank cools, it'll, it can suck the uh, fluid back into the uh, the tank again. On the other side, we actually have this is this is the vent tube. So this actually uh, comes up, and there's a tube that comes all the way up to the top of the tank on the inside from there, and uh, that actually vents to the outside. So it has to fill up to sort of over here before it uh, it will spew out onto the ground, which is a lot of volume there. So uh, plenty of volume for what I need, and this tank should sit really nicely just down in this little pocket down in here, and I just need to now make my custom. Uh, expansion tank to sit right here in the engine bay. By the way, I'd just like to mention, I just went down to Super Cheap and I saw this really cool vice down there and uh, I had to grab it. I think it's uh, the best uh, type I've seen like this. Basically, it's got some quick releases on the base so you can um, undo it and turn it around like this. But also, it's got a quick release on the side and you can rotate the whole thing. It's fantastic, and then even on the bottom, it's got some uh, sort of square jaws and some other jaws for maybe holding tube and stuff like that. 
I saw it and I thought, this thing is a brilliant idea. So uh, I've uh, installed it here now and so far so good. I am, I am very impressed. This thing is cool. Okay, so the overflow tank is mounted in there quite nicely. It's just got a couple of uh, spot welded on brackets in there with some captive nuts in them. And uh, it sits down in there quite nice and neat and tidy. And uh, it's time to start doing some CAD templating to try and manufacture a expansion tank to sit right about here somewhere. All right, that was lots of uh, playing around with cardboard and I've managed to make myself up my rough shape. It's got a, a big crease through the back. It's not sort of uh, sealed properly at the moment, but because there's a crease in this engine bay here, I need to try and match that on the back to try and sort of give me the shape I need. Um, this will be uh, this will be nice, plenty of volume. I haven't calculated the volume, but it's probably a litre and a half. A lot of these things are a half a litre or something. They're not, they're not very big, so uh, this is going to be plenty to do the job and it should sit something like that so let's start uh, cutting it out of aluminium So I went to all this effort to make this sort of uh, crease in the back, made it all super complicated. And I don't think it really makes it sit any uh, <laughs> that much better into the engine bay. It does sit neatly, but uh, I, yeah, it's still not hugging super tight, but uh, that will do the job nicely now. So I'm going to uh, cut out some sides and then we can weld this thing together. Okay, so the uh, the basic structure is ready to go. I'm just going to clean up all these edges and uh, and make it nice and clean and tidy. Use some acetone without my gloves on, <laughs> and uh, and then I will go through and tack it all together and uh, make sure everything is looking good. All right, well, uh, this is all welded up. Uh, some of my welding looks sort of half decent and some doesn't. You can sort of see some of the, the ugliness up here. So you can sort of see strips like that. It's not bad. It's not amazing. It's not show quality, but it should definitely do the job. I'm pretty sure this should be watertight, so this should do the job. So now it is time to uh, work out where it's going exactly in the engine bay, and then we can start looking at where we're gonna put fittings and all the rest of it.
Okay, so I made myself a couple of brackets here that will uh, help to mount this uh, tank onto into the car. While they are cooling down, I'm going to get onto putting the outlets onto this. So uh, I've got a bunch of fittings from Raceworks, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a um, a dash six on the front here. That's going to be going to the top of the radiator. I've got a cap for the center at the top. This is uh, obviously the pressure cap, a uh, weld on fitting they uh, they have, and a dash 10 weld on. This is going to be the return from the bottom of the tank uh, going back to the bottom of the radiator. So let's start drilling some holes and uh, welding on some weld on fittings. All right, well, I'm really happy with that. I've got all my sort of Raceworks weld-on fittings all welded in, and they look great. Um, it's quite easy to uh, sort of fit them in and weld them into place and get them exactly where I need them. So this is all, all these outlets are exactly where I need them for the best fit in the car possible. So um, what I might do now is I'm gonna pull the radiator out and start making the places where these bits connect to on the radiator. All right, so I got my tabs welded onto the radiator. So the radiator should hopefully now be done. It has uh, got all of the fittings on it that needs to be on it. Now I've got my uh, expansion tank. All I need to do now is actually make up the uh, the mounts to actually uh, sit in the car. So what I'm gonna do, you saw me make up the little brackets. These are the weld on brackets with captive nuts in them to mount to the engine bay, but I need the tabs. Uh, I've got some aluminum here, so let's go and uh, cut and fold up some tabs that uh, I can then mount onto my tank and have it so I can screw this into the engine bay, make it all nice and neat and dirty. Okay, so I am really happy with all that work on this episode. So this line here actually does clear the uh, uh, the air filter that I've got set up here. Now, obviously I've taken it off just so you can see what I'm talking about, but uh, it all fits in nicely. The tank is mounted, it sits nicely in the engine bay, it looks good. I'm gonna have to come up with some sort of uh, labels for the top of these uh, Raceworks caps, because I've got Raceworks caps everywhere and they're facing different directions and that's not gonna go. Um, I just mentioned again that the uh, the cap I put onto the radiator, the uh, the filling cap, it's just aiding filling. You don't need to have it. I could fill the whole thing from the expansion tank. The trouble is there's only a tiny little dash 10 line. It's plenty for the expansion tank, but it would take a long time to fill the system um, if that's the only way to do it. So it would work, but it'd be slow. So uh, much easier having a uh, sort of filler, filler cap just to, to aid in things and uh, I am really happy, it's uh, plumbed up. I've got to get another line to go from the outlet of the expansion tank going down into the bottom inlet into this um, overflow tank. But it's looking good. So um, I think that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, the Alpha 147 was first released at the Turin Motor Show in 2000 as a replacement for the 146 and 147. It was available with a range of four-cylinder petrol and diesel versions, but the most interesting was the GTA. The GTA had wider arches and it came with the 3.2 litre Busso V6, making 250 horsepower. It was available in either the Trouble Plate Satter Speed Automated Manual or Six Speed Manual. 
The London-based tuning house Autodata produced a few bored out versions of the GTA, but their craziest spec was the 3.7 litre supercharged GTA AM Super, making 422 horsepower. And if you want to see some more about the 147 GTA, go and check out Jack on number 27, as he's just bought one, and I'm sure he'll have a lot more content about it. I'm quite happy with this week's uh, progress. I'm uh, definitely getting better at my aluminium welding. It's far from show quality, but there are moments of, uh, of, of neatness there. Uh, it's just a matter of getting it uh, flying all the way, but I uh, will pressure test that and all that sort of stuff, and I'm sure it's gonna be fine. Um, but it's it's looking good. We are uh, we're definitely getting through all of the uh, the sort of complicated parts of the uh, the engine. It's actually it's taking shape. Yeah, a lot of the mechanical bits are done. There's a few more to go though. So yeah, yeah. So so hang in there for the ride. And <laughs> uh, if you please like and subscribe. And if you'd like to follow some day early, uh, and watch the videos ad free. Ad free is what I'm trying to say. Thank you. Else. My mind's gone blank after That's all it. that new knowledge I've just absorbed. So, <laughs> yes, yes, ad free for Patreons. Yes, so uh, yeah, join us on Patreon. Uh, Patreons. It does help us out. Yes. And um, we'll see you next week. <laughs> see you guys. Hey guys. Manual. I gotta remember the last bit. Six speed manual or the trouble plagued, seller speed automated manual. Six speed manual or the trouble plagued automated, automated, seller speed. And it was available either take 350. The GTA had wider arches. See, you're putting me off.